Hello and welcome to another episode of History with Andy Ackright. I'm Andy Ackright. Today, I am in Shawnee, Kansas. I am just west of I-35 on Shawnee Mission Parkway, just right by Goddard Street, by Nigro's Western Wear, and there's a quick trip right up there, uh, right by Goddard there. This is one of the busiest streets here in Kansas City or in the suburbs. And the way you get to where we are here is this turn lane. And where are we? Well, we're at Pioneer Park. So, you probably don't know about Pioneer Crossing Park. Probably seen it, but you've probably not stopped if you are in this area. So, let's check it out. Pioneer Crossing Park, Pioneer Crossing Park. So Shawnee has a lot of history to it, a lot of history to it. Gum Springs, um, the Native American tribes, the Shawnee coming from the Ohio River Valley. Um, that's why it's called Shawnee. Um, the first governor's mansion, territorial governor's mansion, Quantrail's raid, everything like that. But you had the pioneers coming through on the trail. So let's do a quick walkthrough. Pioneer Crossing Park, City of Shawnee, 1856. So just after Kansas became a state. And here we go. So Pioneer Crossing Park is actually pretty neat. And we'll talk a little bit about these guys. But they have a lot of informative plaques here. The Military Road, California Road. We've got the trails and where they crossed. The Wagon Master's House. Great unique sculpture there. Gum Springs, as I mentioned. And then of course the trails here, West Court, Santa Fe Trail, Oregon, and California trails. So, we're still here, walking in Pioneer Crossing Park. And this is the area that you might have seen if you're driving down Shiny Mission Parkway. This is a beautiful sculpture. oxen in their wagon train and it transitions into this relief here of the trains wagon trains crossing going west going west through Shawnee You go up those stairs, you go to a neighborhood. There's a little park there with swing and stuff. But that's Pioneer Crossing Park. That's it. So a lot of people pass by it, but they don't look at the details and the signs and everything like that. So we're just gonna take a brief look at the signs to say, hey, you know what, they did this for a reason. Might wanna stop by and check it out. All right, so let's check out some of those details. Poof! We're here in the first section, the history section of the park. It was 57 steps to get up to the park, uh, that third section of the park. And here you have the history signs. First, we're gonna check out this sculpture of Dick Williams. Also done by Charles Goslin. It is made out of native limestone and bronze. This is Richard Williams was born in Tennessee in 1830, son of Judge Arthur Williams. As a young man, Richard came to Johnson County, that's where we are, in the 1850s, 
employed as a surveyor by the U.S. government. During the 1850s and early 1860s, Dick Williams was a wagon master escorting wagon trains from Kansas City to Santa Fe and other Western de destinations. So the park, Pioneer Crossing Park, and I apologize if I call it Pioneer Trails Park, is divided into two sections. We have the, the section with the historical signs and the sculpture of Dick Williams. And then we have the section with the uh, large sculpture of the wagon train. Both of these uh, sculptures were made by local artist Charles Gosselin. Now this was a, a point of controversy uh, when it came around. It was to celebrate the 150th anniversary of Shawnee. So in 2006, this was dedicated. Now, it's on 2.2 acres of land, but it cost almost a million dollars. A million dollars. It actually was an old used car lot before this. But this is by Charles Goslin. This section of the sculpture is made out of brick. And you'll see the men leading the trains. Here you'll also see a guard walking along the route and in the back as well making sure everyone is safe here you see a mother and child and a child and the dog walking out among the very tall grasses of the plains remember they're not lawn mowers back then and then of course some sunflowers incorporated into it but charles goslin uh designed this you know small version and then it was blown up 3d and uh used brick to make this this sculpture and it is quite beautiful now while there are two sections to this part, there's actually a third. And it's it's interesting to me, it just came to my mind when I was taking some pictures of, of the oxen there, that they're celebrating this as a trail. And then look here, one of the busiest roads, the modern trail. So the third section is a playground. I'm gonna speed it up here while I go up these stairs. Are you ready? Here we go. And you can call this the third section of the park. Right here, some swings, slides, a little playground for the kids. So while there are two sections to the park, I guess this could actually be called your third, although this is actually called Douglas Highland Park. Ready to go back down? I'll skip the filming, let's just go. So I mentioned that there's a lot of history here in Shawnee. Let's check it out first with the California Road. So the California Road was originally going through the Shawnee Territory. Um, so the Shawnee Territory, and it was going from Westport through Johnson County, Douglas County, over towards uh, Lawrence. Um, and then it went, it went south, but it was Westport Road and going south, but during the Civil War, with Kansas and Missouri being so next to so close to each other and the fighting there they ended up that the California Trail went up and connected to the Oregon California Trail near Lawrence. Now one cool thing Francis Parkman so Francis Parkman wrote the book The Oregon Trail and he would he came down here 
on what would later be called California Road out of Westport to this location near present day 61st and Knox at Turkey Creek. That's that little Turkey Creek right there going there. Before continuing on to the Fort Leavenworth Military Road to Fort Leavenworth. And then on his famous trip, the Oregon Trail. So Francis Parkman was here in Shawnee on his trip to the Oregon Trail, writing his book, The Oregon Trail. Pretty cool. So next is the Fort Leavenworth Military Road. There's a lot of signs and it says that, but people really don't know how important it was. So they built these forts in the West to protect uh, this, the you know citizens of the new United States um, against the Native Americans, really. So Fort Leavenworth Military Road, um, it mainly went from Fort Leavenworth and Leavenworth uh, Kansas down to Fort Gibson in Oklahoma, but also also went all the way up to Fort Snelling in Minnesota and then down to Fort Towson in Oklahoma. They built Fort Scott uh, down in southern Kansas. Um, that was a big going back point. But the, the big thing was, and you'll see it right here, it was actually part of the route that Congress had des designated as the borderline of the permanent Indian frontier. Permanent Indian Frontier, which means here's a line. We've got our forts along this line, right? The border and everything else is junk. So even before like Kansas became a state, when you went across that border, across the Missouri River, it was Native American territory. It was junk land, right? And so the Fort Leavenworth military road was the road that divided the civilized uh, people from the Native Americans. History. All right, let's check out a couple other trails and places here. Westport, Santa Fe Trail, Oregon, California Trail, right? Westport, people think, oh, that's where the uh, Santa Fe Trail started. Yes, that's true, but it actually first started in Franklin, Missouri, and that's where William Becknell and his uh, troop came in 1821. So the Mexican uh, army had had uh, defeated the, the Spanish, and so now they opened these trade routes. So William Becknell went there from Franklin, Missouri. Why was Franklin, Missouri important? Well, it was important because Daniel Morgan Boone, Daniel Boone's son, and Nathaniel Boone, his other son, they found a salt lick there, and that is where it started. So it's right in the middle of Missouri. Then the next stop, the next starting point for the Santa Fe Trail was Independence and then Westport. And then you have the Oregon Trail and the Oregon Trail went through the Rocky Mountains, people looking for these new lands to the west. And the California Trail, obviously you associate it with the California Gold Rush and people say the California Oregon Trail. And they all met up in Gardner, Kansas. That's where the split is, Gardner, Kansas. Okay, one last stop, Gum Springs. Okay, so we've been talking about all these trails. Let's get the trail map. Okay, so this is why it's important, right? So you are here and you see all these trails coming, right? So we mentioned that the Native American land, right? Dividing it, the Native American land. We have Fort Leavenworth Military Road coming here. There's Fort Leavenworth coming down here. So. All of this was native land here, native land here. So everybody's coming to this new land, to this new opened up land. And that's why this is so important. So right here, Fort Leavenworth Military Road, this border between the, the civilized land and the Native American land, right? That's why this is so important. All these stops. So you have Fort Osage out here. And uh, fun fact, Albert Pujols went to Fort Osage High School. Um, and then coming down through the suburbs of uh, Johnson County and then the, the surrounding area of Kansas City. So right down here, Shawnee, and then you have where they all split here, down in Gardner, you see the Santa Fe Trail here, Santa Fe Trail here, Oregon California Trail here, and once again, Fort Leavenworth up here, boom. 
That's why this is so important. That's why this is so important. That's why they have Pioneer Crossing Park. Crossing Park. Because all those trails crossed each other, right? Now, one last thing. This thing, this place used to be called Gum Springs. Why? Well, there were springs and the sap from the trees. Located today at 59 Terrace and Blue Jacket in the city of Shawnee, Gum Springs was a site of the Shawnee Indian Church and Meeting House, as well as, as well as the location of several excellent springs, right? So what do you need? You need uh, lumber, you need fresh water, and you need grass, right? So uh, Gum Springs was a great place for that, great place to stop. Now the, uh, the Indian Church that they have um, there is a burial ground there, a uh, Native American burial ground there. It just got recognized, um, so that is awesome. Um, and there's also a spring to the northeast of that. Uh, they also reference um, the Shawnee Methodist Mission, which is still standing. It's the only uh, National Historic Landmark uh, in Johnson County, and that's in Fairway. So Gum Springs here, this was also a stop for uh, the troops in the Mexican uh, Mexican War. Uh, so when they were traveling down there. So 59th Terrace and Blue Jacket, you have this meeting house, this Indian church where leaders would meet and everything. And then also Andrew Reeder, the first territorial governor of Kansas, just a street over, he was, uh, his house was right there. And this was the county seat for three years before Olathe took it. So this has been an enjoyable trip around uh, Pioneer Crossing Park in Shawnee. 2.2 acres, this little guy, but how much history? How much history here? Pioneer Crossing Park in Shawnee. Shawnee Mission Parkway, west of I-35 and east of Goddard. If you see Nigro's Western wear with a horse on top, you've gone too far, right here. This has been another episode of History with the Indy Eckright. I'm Indy Eckright. I'll see you next time.